I'm your host of the Most Local 23, and you're joining me back for Chapter 2. Warning, top secret. The events you're about to witness are classified and contain privileged information. If you have stumbled across this recording by accident, I urge you to set down your device and walk away. Should you choose to continue to understand, you can understand that you do so at your own peril. Please respect the secrecy and discretion of the agencies and citizens, innocent citizens involved. Do not share this dossier or even a snippet of information within it. Or you will place the lives of others in grave danger, which is never a polite thing to do. You decide to read on. Risks be damned. Very well, you are warned. Undoubtedly, you wonder who I am. Which, while my surname denotes a royal background, I assure you, I'm anything but. I have, however, consorted with royalty, swum with the sharks, survived torture, and escaped from the most ruthless prisons. Fine. Shark swimming reference was a metaphor, but a cat can dream? Many people mistake me for a common house cat. Not only endure their misconceptions, but I encourage them. Better keep my cover intact. By day, it appears that I am the putter around Annie's apartment, seeking rays of sunshine, taking well-deserved naps. But it couldn't be farther from the truth. Two weeks earlier. The latest intrigue started innocently enough one warm afternoon in Venice, California. Annie was frosting confections in the kitchen when there was a rap 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 on the screen door. Coming! Wait, Annie, don't open the door before looking through the surveillance hole. She had a bad habit of just opening the door and smiling and whoever was approaching. She points the spatula down, you like a sword. Swear to me. Swear that you'll be on your best behavior, Theodore. Oh, buttercream. Bring that just a touch closer, and I'll promise you anything. <laughs> No frosting for you. You know what happened last time. Whatever. Those pillows were hideous anyway. It's only for a few minutes. Miles of the cutest, most adorable fur baby you'll meet in your entire life. Did she just say fur baby? No, 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 no. She obviously meant regular people baby. I am the only fur baby around here, and given your dating habits, Annie, I, I doubt that's going to change anytime soon. The rap 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 sounds again, this time louder and more insistent. Perhaps my cover has been blown. Have the Russians, the Chinese, or the North Koreans come to spirit me away? Contemplating possible escape route, you gaze quickly. Sh shifts between the back door and the air vent tucked behind the refrigerator. And he's about the door. Open the door, I should brace yourself. And he would be helpless without me. They may try to compel her to talk, and she wouldn't know a thing. It's been some time, but you will stay and fight for her life, as well as the secret you hold. Annie unlocks the chain bolt and opens the door. Mabel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. Well, why go to cosmetic counter when Mabel's makeup maidens comes to you? State your business, intruder. It really done blonde strides in the room on six-inch platform heels like she owns the place. Thanks for letting me bring Miles, poor darling. We're treating him for separation anxiety. His therapist recommended I only leave him unattended for small increments. Your spy dar hones in on the unwelcome guests like a cutting-edge drone tracker. Cheap, gold-plated hoop earrings. Fluttery, unnatural, thick eyelashes. Overpriced yoga studio inspired beaded bracelets. While she may dress like she shops at World Mar <laughs> Market Store, I doubt she works for her, or has ever visited any foreign government. Either way, there's supposedly a baby in the purse. I rather like babies and wouldn't mind seeing one. Placing an oversized designer knockoff satchel on the ground, Mabel bends down and unzips the bag and. Oh god, you're evil looking! <laughs> Look at this dog! Here he is! Ah, finally. It's about time you let me out of there. The scraggly pest that wriggles out looks like an unfortunate cousin of the canine from Wizard of Oz. Oh god, demon, put it back in, I beg you. 
I need to jump to higher ground. In an instant, you leap up to the kitchen counter where the higher ground might just give you the advantage. This might be not be the infiltration of a foreign government, but it is still an assault to say the least. Salutations, creature with bad hair. This probably feels as awkward to you as it does to me, but we're both responsible adults. Well, at least I am. We can handle this encounter with aplomb. My name is Pumpernickel, Theodore Von... Where's your kibble cat? I'm hungry. I'm sorry? The species of canine is unmannerly as it is ugly. The dog ignores you and skitters around the corner into the kitchen. Hey! Don't touch my food! Without thinking, you race after the rat-haired intruder. Oh, look, they're playing! Ah, uh, I'm not so sure. You quickly turn the corner, only to be met by something too horrific to comprehend. Miles sprawled, leg eagled on the floor, his lips glazed over as he licks his private area. Oh, God, are you... Am I what? Ne never mind, are you... Are you fond of my bowl? Miles turns from his disgusting task to look at your beautifully bejeweled food bowl. Oh my god, really? I could care less about your precious dish, cat. The cable in it, however, is a different story. Does your cat always stare like that? It's kind of intense. Oh, he's just being daddy. Indeed I am. Mabel smiles slowly, but her eyes, green with envy, shift between Annie and your beautiful bowl. You know, Annie, we could do a trade. The magic illuminator for the pretty little pet bull. Really? Yes. Sure, you have a perfect facial structure for this product. I wouldn't offer this trade to anyone, you know. Annie, it's time for them to leave now. See? Even your fat cat approves. Fat! The claws are coming out now, lady. I use the term lady loosely. I can't just stand here and let them take what's rightfully mine. I'll protect my bull. <gasps> what's happening, cat? Are you are you dying? Yes. <clears throat> my food. <clears throat> Poisoned. You'll be joining me soon. <laughs> <laughs> So much fun! Wait, what? Mom! Mom, the food was poison! <laughs> you find your spine now and cross your eyes and cough out a perfect hairball right into your bowl. Oh, sorry, I guess it wasn't poison after all. <laughs> oh, wow. That's low, cat. You almost gave me a heart attack. Oh, Teddy, is everything okay? Gross, and all over the bowl? Did that teach you a lesson? Trying to take something that's rightfully mine. Annie reaches down and ruffles your fabulous mane with her tiny hand. As much as I appreciate the offer, Mabel, I'm going to have to decline. I don't want to upset Teddy's routine. All right, if you say so. You catch the envious look Mabel gives your bowl as she raggles miles back into his carrier. Arriva Dirty Dog, I hope your bowels grow increasingly irritable over the years. Enjoy the sarcasm while you can, Cat. You'll be singing a different tune soon enough. What do you mean by that? Without another word, Mabel slings the carrier over her shoulder and follows Annie to the door. Thank you so much for coming over. Of course, darling, you look fabulous. Always lovely doing business with you. They exit the premises, Mabel's heels click clacky against each other as, they, as she saw she so down the sidewalk. You wait for Annie to return to the kitchen for a debriefing. That wasn't so bad, right? Theodore, I think you and Miles were really getting along. A chill travels down your spine. Today's sore adventure could be the tip of an iceberg. Oh, come on, don't give me that look. A little company never hurt anyone. You walk back over to your bejeweled food bowl, staring deeply into its sparkly splendor. What secrets do you contain, little bowl? What adventures will you reveal? Remember Mabel's greedy eyes all over your bowl, and in an angry act of defiance, you swat it aside as if it were just nothing. 
Theodore Von Pumpernickel. You're not supposed to do that. Really? Because the last time I looked at my PIA contract, I had a license to spill. <laughs> oh, that was a horrible part. <laughs> oh my god, that was kind of horrible, but it's kind of hilarity horrible. While the apartment may be safe from unwanted guests, the neighborhood is a different story. Venice Beach is an area ripe with activity, activity that needs constant surveying. I merely need to wait for Annie to leave. She's a nervous type. If she discovered I was gone, there would be hell to pay. I'd never hear the end of it. With An After Annie leaves for work, you wait a half an hour on the off chance she might return. I'm sorry, Annie. If my operations were jeopardized, the fate of the freer world would hang in the balance. Which is why you simply didn't wait during those 30 minutes. You spend them upping your spy game. Today, you finish inspecting the place for bugs, thieves, or any classified documents that may need shredding. Perhaps today I'll present myself to the lovely Tasmania. It's been a rather long time since I was graced with a presence. Soon enough, the 30 minutes have passed, and it's time to begin. World, I am ready for whatever dangers you may hold. I hope Annie doesn't return while I'm gone. Perhaps I should look into getting her chipped. Oh my god, could you imagine? When ready, you squeeze yourself through the air vent behind the fridge and sneak your way to the outside world. Ah, fresh air and freedom. I can taste it. Reaching a busy intersection, you sit down to catch your breath, cleaning your whiskers as you wait for the light. Soon enough, the traffic lights turn and you quickly scamper across the street. Venice, California was a wonderful wonderland filled with sights, sounds to charm even the most jaded of tourists. And danger. Yes, I can taste it as well. According to your trustworthy sources, deep within the PIA, quirky Venice Beach had recently become a criminal hotspot. A home to international cartels, jewel thieves. A near doer wells? Near do wells, I guess. Hitmen and villains who sought nothing but world domination. One of those near do wells is the old lady on the corner of Rose and Seventh. A bitter hog who sits in her withered lawn chair, throwing insults and peanut shells at anyone who passes by. You damn whippersnapper, stay away from my house. Ah, oh, she is not pleasant. But it does present an interesting challenge. I should test my evasion skills. I'm going to end up spending all diamonds on this book. Memories from the past blend with your vision as your heart beats faster. It's as James always told you. As a 0079 agent, you must accept every challenge, every mission, no matter how impossible. If you can find the strength to face your foes, who will? He's right. Who will fix this woman if not me? No one. Bracing yourself, you launch across the street, laying low as you slip right under a fence. Before you know it, you're almost past her house. Either she's losing a step in her old age, or I'm less rusty than I thought I... POW! Out of nowhere, a peanut bounces off the pavement right in front of your paws. Good God! You look up, and there she is. Doris Pfefferhofer. Nice try, come cat. Adrenaline explodes, so every muscle in your body has a barrage of peanut shells rain over you. With expert agility, you evade every incoming projectile, just as James taught you. He would be proud. Damn. Well, don't you come back here again, you mangy thing. Despite her harsh words, you make it out of her yard in one piece, feeling more alive than you have in months. Ah, can't breathe, but I, I made it. Give a shake in case any peanut shrapnel. <laughs> Happen to get lodged in your fur. I suppose you haven't lost it quite yet, old boy. You meander down the street, minding your own business, the 009 rhinestones emblazoned on your black pleather collar. Slipping into a coffee house, you check in on your first confidant, Lou. Thirty-something-year-old screenwriter who, unbeknownst to him, is one of your most valuable informants. Hey, Theodore. Long time no see. Lou runs his hand along your coat as you curl up along the leg of the chair. 
pleasure to meet you as well, my friend. I apologize for my absences of late. A good agent must, well, never has much free time. I saved some cream cheese for you. Are you hungry? After a quick sniff, you licked the cheese from his fingers and ascertained the concoction was made with 50% milk, whole milk, and 50% cream. Magnificent. The perfect combination. Well, Lou specialized in cheap, foreign-made horror scripts. His passion has always been big budget. Jason Bourne like thrillers. So I have a new idea for a pilot script, Theodore. Mind telling me what you think? I'm all ears. It's based on this cop who came to my apartment complex last night. It turns out there's this guy who's... Agent 009s were hardly allowed to share secrets of her trade, especially not with lay persons, but... Lou was a kind man. Instead of playing dumb, you encourage him with a headbutt or enthusiastic purr when, based on your own experience, you believe Lou may have something. What do you think? Uh, might have some potential, right? I'll say... Keep fishing, friend. Instead of a contented purr, you sneeze toward the rest of his bagel. Dang. Guess not. Just keep up the hard work, my friend. You, we can't all be gifted with written word. Until next time, au revoir. With that, you leave from his lap and make your way back out in the, in the streets to meet your next compatriot. You sneezed in his bagel, though. De Pulci's fine market. You always check in on Senior Oso when your missions allow. It's a magical place run by a wonderful man. I can almost taste the delicious scraps of tuna, salmon, and yellowtail. Arriving outside, you spot a humble patio table and large red umbrellas, truly a staple of the neighborhood. But you make your way to the more exciting part of the joint, the back alley. Ah, Theodore, where have you been, mi amigo? Oh, you know, just keeping the world safe as best as I can. You look well, senor. Ah, sit with me a moment. We can talk. Always a pleasure. Closing your eyes, you relax in the sun as Senor Oso shares a bit of fish and stories of his late wife, Rosaria. Your heart pangs for Senor Oso, as you also know the pain of lost and forbidden love. Too many operatives never return from the field, or worse, their covers are blown and their families pay the price. No. I will sacrifice my own happiness for Tasmania's safety. Life is short, Theodore. Do you... Do not borrow trouble. We will find plenty of it by ourselves. If only you knew. But I'm willing to pay the price. Always tell your loved ones that you love them. And remember the grass isn't necessarily greener on the other side of the fence. Oh, totally agree. Indeed. Thank you, wise one. At that, you happen to glance down at Oso. Wow. We had his name perfect. Oso's wristwatch. Tasmania's scheduled to arrive at work any moment. Forgive me, friend, I but I must go. Back to work for me. No one takes care of business like the person who owns a place. See you later, mi amigo. With a quick salute, you dart out of the aisle and out in the street towards your destination, the Marrakesh. Perhaps I shouldn't be venturing this far. If I've seen and recognized, I could place my beloved in danger. Or Annie would discover my escape portal and my surveillance would be curtailed until I create a new exit. Arriving at the Marrakesh, all thoughts skid to a halt when you see her. Tasmania. It wouldn't matter if she wore a ball gown or sackcloth in your eyes, she's the most beautiful thing on two legs. Hi, Teddy. My God, she is beauty incarnate. I must... Stay with Tasmania for dinner. Tasmania, it is I, Theodore Vaughn Pumpernickel, secret agent cat. Good God, what am I thinking? Hold it together, Theodore. You can't blow your cover. <clears throat> I mean, uh, what I meant to say is it is Theodore Vaughn Pumpernickel, sweetness, fragrant cat. Oh, you're so adorable. Without hesitation, she scoops you up in her arms and begins to pet you all over. You lean into every gentle caress, unable to control yourself around your beloved. You are like catnip for the soul. If I were not already bonded to Annie, I would stay in your arms forever. 
Mr. Von Pumpernickel, you're too handsome. Thank you for the wonderful greeting, Mia Moore, but Tasmania has to go to work now. Someone has to pay the rent, and unfortunately, it is not my boyfriend. He is, how do you say, never do well? Ah, God, you're perfect. I would save you from an army of near-do-wells. Get a hold of yourself, Theodore. What would James think if he saw you? How you're acting right now? Before you can respond with a loving purr, her horrid boyfriend, the gold-plated man, barges in behind her. Tasmania, what are you doing? We don't allow mangy mutts like that in here. Do it on! I would never. He leap out of her arms, ready to fight to the death in her honor. Are your mangy ears filled with garbage? No cats allowed here, fatty. Before you can leap at his throat, he shoos you out of the restaurant and slams the door in your face. Fatty, I have never. I will rip your... <sighs> Easy, Theodore. Pick your battles. Live to fight another day. I can't. Like, I'm actually kind of intrigued by this, actually. I'm actually really enjoying this. With that, you quickly head down, back down to the beach, and make your way home. Can I ever tell Annie about my new friends? My recent missions? Yes, officially, I'm still a retired agent, but... Are these excursions my attempt to get my paws back in the game? Before long, you're back at home, squeezing your way through the air vent that leads to the kitchen. Mission accomplished. Home sweet home. Yes, I know it's for Annie's own benefit or peace of mind if she believes I'm a simple, contented house cat. Casually make your way to the kitchen when your hair suddenly stand on end. You pause, sniffing the air around you. Lilacs. Cheap. Emerus. Someone is... It's only then you see it. Right before your eyes. It's gone. My bowl. My priceless bejewel bowl is gone. Oh. Okay. So. I'm assuming that either. She cleaned his bowl. Or. <laughs> someone actually took his bowl. Okay. Alright. Well, I guess we'll find out here soon. Um, with that being said. I hope you all did enjoy. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down to show more, aka the description. There's links to social media, our Discord, and a few links to support me and my content. Um, without further ado, like I said, let me know in the comment section below. I'm enjoying this book. It's a lot of fun. Um, clearly, it's. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what else I can say besides this is this is actually a lot of fun. Um, oh, we got the card here. I'll show you. We got the card for purchasing three premium choices outfits. Don't worry about Theodore. He's just a regular cat. Ha 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 ha! If only you knew. Yes. So we got chapter three through five next. Uh, like I said, I'm enjoying it. Let me know in the comment section below, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.